I've been keeping reef tanks long enough to know that when it comes to bubble algae, the minute you see it in your tank, you know it isn't a matter of if it's gonna spread, but when. Time for the big guns. Hey everybody, Reef Girl here and welcome to my channel. I have a healthy, happy, relatively peaceful community of fish here in Amathia's garden. When I noticed a couple of months ago that the bubble algae was spreading faster than my four emerald crabs could keep up with it, I knew something had to be done. Because of how stable and balanced this community of fish is, I agonized over whether to bring in another fish to help clear up the bubble algae. Before I started this tank, I had a stock list of fish that I would love to have. Near the top of that list was a fox face rabbit fish. For one reason or another, as time went by, I never did get around to getting a fox face. But as luck would have it, just when I needed one, my fish guy had some available. His were the one spot, Seganus unimaculatus. So I did a bunch of reading and decided this might work for me. I bought the fish in late August and after a five week quarantine, I picked it up in early October. While I've been talking about all this, you've been watching my fish at play. This is what they're like all day long. They get along super well. There's the odd skirmish here and there. So you can see why I might be anxious about adding another fish, upsetting the balance, if you will. But something had to be done about that bubble algae. I was really happy to be able to pick up a healthy fish from my fish guy. As soon as I got him home, I put the bag in the sump to equalize the temperature. Once the temperature was equalized, I moved the entire bag into this bucket. And on the advice of my fish guy, I used water transfer as the acclimation method as opposed to drip acclimating. I removed half of the water in the bag and I replaced it with tank water. Waited 15 minutes and did it again. Waited another 15 minutes and then it was safe to put the fish in the tank. You might know that fox face possess venomous dorsal spines. They're very peaceful fish, and this is their method of defense against more aggressive or boisterous fish. Because of those venomous spines, it is a bad idea to ever try and handle a fox face with your bare hands. Even gloves can be punctured very, very easily. In any case, I had planned to use a net, and that's what I did. The Orfec lights were on when I first placed this fish in the tank and I turned them off just to give him a little bit of relief from the really bright lights. This is minutes after I put him in here and you can see that Pamela the Tomini Tang has already found him and is doing her best to intimidate him. Now Sven the male angelfish has found him and you can see the fox face is presenting his dorsal spines to tell Sven to back off. I'm gonna name this fish Ziggy. I was amazed that it only took a few hours. This is about four hours after he went into the tank and Ziggy has colored right up and now he's coming out to swim around for the first time. The other fish are gonna check him out, but I feel like he's gonna be safe from them. Within 10 minutes of coming out for the very first time, check it out, he's already nibbling at the rocks. I'm really pleased about that. I managed to capture a bit of footage of Sven being goofy. Or maybe this is a courtship display for the female angelfish, but he quite often swims around this way, vibrates his tail. Maybe he's just showing off for Inga, the female angelfish. 
As the lights ramp down for evening of Ziggy's first day in his new home, he looks comfortable. He's nibbling at the rocks, moving here and there, kind of avoiding the other fish, but keeping his eyes open. I have not seen any displays of aggression from any of them yet. Ziggy spent his first night in the back left corner of the tank. Now it's the next morning and it's feeding time. So let's see how things go. Everybody's excited because they know what happens when the pump gets turned off. It took a few minutes, but there he is on the right-hand side. It's only been a day, but the first few hurdles are overcome. He's in the tank, he's colored up, he looks healthy, he's eating, and everyone seems to be getting along. The question now is, of course, will he eat the bubble algae? On day three, I found this. The green wrasse immobile on the bottom of the tank. This fish sometimes hovers, but never just lays there like this. I wondered whether he had been stung by Ziggy. This is really unnatural behavior for him. Looking more closely, I could not see any sign of any puncture marks, but then of course I could only see one side of him. About 10 minutes later, and the fish is back. Not swimming normally, quite slow, sluggish. Obviously something happened. You can see here that although he's swimming quite well, he's slow and his tail fin is clamped. I'm still looking for puncture wounds, but not seeing any. Those scuffs on the top of his back have been there for several days. I suspect this happened probably less than an hour ago, and it's really good to see that this fish is recovering. And after a couple of days, Ziggy is definitely feeling more comfortable. Check out how he bumps the hawkfish. That was really interesting. But obviously, they're still friends. The day after the green wrasse got nailed, take a look. That mark on his nose, I think, is where he got stung. However, the behavior is back to normal, and as long as I keep an eye on that spot and make sure it doesn't become inflamed or necrotic, I think he'll be fine. Day three, and it looks like Ziggy has settled in well. I know for sure now that he eats turf algae. Day five, and I'm doing a survey of the areas which previously were wall-to-wall -wall bubble algae to where you could not see rock. This is one of them, and the algae has disappeared to the point the green rhodactus is opening. Similarly here, you can now see coralline and rock beneath where there was a wall of bubble algae. And on the other side of the tank, this is what I call the junkyard because of the mess made by the pistol shrimp check it out. Those rocks were totally covered with bubbles. There is less here than I've seen in quite a while. So although I have not been able to capture Ziggy on video actually eating bubble algae, the evidence is clear. More bubble algae has disappeared in this tank in the last five days than has in the last five weeks when handled only by emerald crabs. I'm very happy. It appears Ziggy is doing a great job. So now I just keep him well fed so he won't eat my corals. Yeah, you guys leave him alone. Please. <laughs>